Hey, well, I'm Alexander Heinz, and this is my lab uh, for the carburetor. Tools needed for maintenance on a carburetor are the Phillips screwdriver, flat head screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a wire brush for cleaning, wrenches or socket set for taking apart, and then carbon choke cleaner for for cleaning the carburetor once you have it taken apart. Carburetor parts cleaner is optional. Gasket set or carb car rebuild kit is recommended. The steps for taking apart a carburetor. For the first step in taking off the carburetor is turning the fuel valve off on the fuel tank, which is that right there. There will also be an overflow hose coming out of the carburetor. Remove this too, which is down here somewhere, I think. Next, loosen the screws in the boot clamps, which are here and here, and and you should be able to wiggle and twist the carburetor to remove it. And then, the car will be held in by a throttle cable, which is the top piece on, uh, on the car. And then the throttle comes off by twisting the top uh, cap on the car. The car will now be free and can now be removed. After removing the car, you need to remove the throttle side from the cable. This is still attached to the vehicle, but in this picture it's already unhooked. And then you can pull everything off the cable. Next, uh, the float is on the bottom of the carburetor, which is that big bowl, and it's usually the first thing, uh, first taken apart when cleaning the carburetor. To remove the float bowl, unscrew the four screws on the bottom of the carburetor. Be sure, be careful on removing these screws because they can strip very easily. The float bowl will, will now be free and can be pulled off the carburetor. Also, if you're not replacing the gasket, be sure not to tear it. Next, remove the float pin that, that holds the float in place, which is right there. And by using a pair of needle nose pliers and after the pin is removed you can remove the float for cleaning. In some carburetors the needle will be hanging on the float and will come up with it. This step can vary from carburetor to carburetor but the jets will need to be removed next. In this carb there are splash plates that are needed to be taken off which is why it's taken off right now and before you can take off the jets. Not all parts will have these. Jets are screws that uh, have a hole through the center and little holes around them, which lets the fuel through to flow through to mix with the air. The plates need to be removed to get to the get jets. The main jet is short and fat, and will have a hex head or a flat screwdriver head. The pilot jet is the long and skinny one, a screw, which will also take a flat head screwdriver to remove. The last step before cleaning the carburetor is removing the couple parts from the outside of the carburetor. The air screw and the idle screw can be removed with a flat head screwdriver. They're located on the sides of the carburetor. The idle screw is the largest screw which adjusts the idle when the engine is idling, which is what he's taking up first, I'm pretty sure. Next, we remove the air screw. The air screw is the smaller screw which adjusts the airflow through the carburetor when the engine is running. 
Also, if the choke can be removed from the driver, remove it. Turn the top with, with a wrench and it should slide over, just like it is in the picture. Before cleaning the car van's parts, make sure to remove all the gaskets and all rings. The easiest way to clean the car bear and the parts is to soak them in car and parts cleaner. But you can also use the parts can also be cleaned by using a spray carbon choke cleaner. Be sure to wear safe glasses and gloves are recommended for cleaning and the parts. The parts should be scrubbed with a wire brush and then sprayed with the carbon choke cleaner to remove any built up the debris inside the carburetor. Next, when cleaning the car, spray the cleaner into the hole so that the jets, air, and auto screw float needle and choke came from. When cleaning the jets, be sure to spray cleaner into the holes. Make sure the jets are clean. If you notice that the jets are not completely clean, try boiling compressed air or those little, little needle feeler gauges to clean the little holes and get any excess debris out. Next, make sure all the debris is removed from the carburetor. Dry the carburetor and all of its parts. The easiest way is with compressed air. Blow compressed air into the holes and blow off all parts of the carb. Make sure the parts are dry before reassembling the carb back together or else it may cause issues. Things to check when doing maintenance on a car bearer. When taking the car bearer apart, check to see that there are no, that there's no corrosion in or around the main parts of the car bearer. And on that main or pilot jets are put in on that the main or pilot jets are plugged up with grime. Also, a person should check if any of the seals are cracked or warped to prevent any further damage of the carburetor once it's back together and on the engine. Now, these are the steps on how to put back together the carburetor. After everything is dry, install the new O-rings and gaskets back into the carburetor if you have them. If not, try and reuse the old ones without damaging them. Next, install the parts in the offset order on which they were, were removed. Meaning the float needle and the fuel splash plates were installed first. Then the jets and the splash plates were installed. Next, install the outer parts with the carburetor. Start with the choke first, then the air screw and idle screw. When installing the air screw, which is the skinny one, screw it in all the way and then back the screw out half a turn. This is a basic idle for an engine, well, a small engine. Um, after the engine is running, you can uh, adjust it so the idle, so the engine idles proper. Yeah. Next, install the float. To install the float, line the holes up with the holes in the carburetor and slide the float pin in. And the, the pin will slide around freely. Just to make sure it is centered so it is secure, make sure the float needle is working properly. Move the float up and down to make sure the needle moves freely. And so it doesn't get stuck when the engine is actually running. Next, install the float bolt onto the carburetor with the four screws on the bottom. 
card should now be complete without throttle. Also, when installing a uh, football, be careful not to over tighten the screws. Because, like I said before, it, they can strip really easily and then it can be a hassle trying to rem rem remove that football again. Install the throttle side butt back into the throttle cable, which is on the engine. And then put the throttle cable through the top cap of the curve and put the spring on. Put the needle in the slide and compress the spring and hook the end of the cable onto the slide. I barely know what that means. Before inserting the slide into the hole, Make sure the slot in the line right there is uh, lined up with our idle screw, which is right there. When they're lined up, slide the idle screw in the screw top cap on. Slide and wiggle the car back into its rubber boots. Tighten the screws on the clamps to hold the rubber boots tight around the car and, and make sure it's in place. Then install the fuel line and overflow line to the carburetor. The last step of the project will be to adjust your air and idle screw. To do this, the engine must be running. If you want to increase the idle, screw the idle screw in and then also, uh, with the air screw, screw the uh, screw the screw out to wrench in the fuel mixture, or in to lean out the engine. It, it depends on which engine you're running, also, because it may vary. Some of the main, well, the main parts of the engine are. Throttle valve, which controls the mixture supply to the engine cylinder, and it's an important part of the carburetor. Uh, the strainer, which is a fine wire mesh filter used to remove any particles before entering the float chamber. The venturi tube, which is a gradually decreasing cross-sectional hollow tube which helps decrease the air pressure of the chamber which makes it uh, better for mixing the fuel and air together. <coughs> Metering system, a device that controls the flow of fuel into the nozzle. This is responsible for a correct mixture of air fuel and consists of two parts which are the metering orifice and the fuel discharge nozzle. The idling system is a passage directly from the float chamber to the venturi tube. This provides the engine with a rich mixture during idling at low speeds when the tube and the throttle is open below 15%. The float chamber is basically a storage tank for fuel for a non-stop supply of fuel and consists of a float valve that maintains the level of fuel in the chamber. The float moves up, down to open, and up to close fuel float in the float chamber. The mixing chamber. I'm not really sure what this thing is, but this is where the air and fuel mixture mix together and then is supplied to the engine cylinder. Uh, next is the idle and transfer ports. There are two other nozzles or ports that deliver fuel to the engine cylinder in addition to the main nozzle of the carburetor. You can't really see them, but they're up there. The main one's there, and the transfer port's right there.
And finally is the choke valve. The choke valve is a valve that controls the mixture of air fuel. The main function of the valve is to control the quantity of air inside the mixing chamber. I use two references for finding all my information. And there's quite a few different references for getting my pictures. But uh, that's the end of my PowerPoint. Thanks for watching.